Hello and welcome to a 2v2 on Road to Kharkov. This is going to be Gari and Pinoy Balut vs. Tech. And any player 0-1. I am casting this uh, on behalf of Steel from Kochu.org. And I assume he's one of these players, although honestly I don't know which one he is. <clears throat> and I'm not familiar with a single one of these names except for Pinoy Balut, who I believe I cast in a game before, so we'll see what these players uh, have to offer this game. Looks like we're seeing some pretty standard openings. We do have Grenadiers hitting the field from Pinoy Bullet. We do have Folks Grenadiers start from Gari and over on the Allied side of things. We have, uh, looks like double Soviets, and they're going to go with Conscripts. Double Conscripts from any player 01, and Conscripts straight into a Maxim for Tech. Meanwhile, over here on the left, we have Folks Grenadiers and Storm Pioneers moving up, capturing resources very quickly. We also have a pretty strong push for the right side by the Soviets. It looks like they're going to be working primarily on this half of the map, doing a little bit of light capping over here, but we'll see what happens. Skipping past this point, actually, in the very opening, instead pushing rather aggressively up to the front lines with both combat engineers and conscripts, trying to get the central victory point captured so prioritizing that, as well as the left side, pushing for the victory points very early, but it looks like they're not going to be able to sustain that as these troops from Gari are going to be moving up and pushing that away. These conscripts are going to be able to inflict a little bit of damage on those folks grenadiers at uh, short to medium range, but the stern pioneers are quickly moving up to support, and the conscripts are going to get pushed back. Meanwhile, over here on the right, we do have a pair of grenadiers moving up against these conscripts. Should be able to overtake them at maximum range. And this maxim is actually uh, a little bit late to get to the field. Urawing across the road here. Not sure. If that's going to work out. I think these Grenadiers will probably take that squad down quite quickly. Molotov goes out and he will retreat immediately, dealing very nice damage to that Grenadier squad and forcing it away as it was also suppressed by this Maxim. And these conscripts will definitely have an advantage over these uh, Grenadiers, which are moving away and have already lost a man. We also have some maximum support moving up. MG42, however, is set up back here, so he won't be able to get too close. Looks like he actually kind of messed up the maximum a little bit right there. Now he's being forced to rotate. He is, however, outside the range of the MG42, at least. Oh, no, nope, not anymore, as he's now walking into it. Not sure what the deal is there. Meanwhile, on the left, it looks like pretty much everything's been capped by Gari. Uh, both players have uh, to focus pretty much all their attention over on the right side, so pretty much totally unopposed for the Axis to capture everything over here, although we do have a conscript squad making its way all the way down to the fuel to harass that. Which seems interesting. He could have just gone for the cutoff for pretty much the same effect. Although they do also need to hold this for them to be fully cut off. And he quickly gets pushed away. Pioneers taking the central victory point, and we do have another Maxim moving up. And we also see a second squad of conscripts from any player uh, one. We have pretty much just pure conscript spam, four squads on the field currently. We also have Molotov research. No doctrine chosen yet, but I would guess he's probably going to be going into something uh, with a PPSH upgrade so that his conscripts will be that much better for uh, a little bit later into the game. Molotov going out over here, although it looks like it was very nicely dodged. Still, the conscripts may be able to win this at this short range. Or possibly not. Looks like they are going to get uh, overwhelmed by Sturm Pioneers. And that will be Gari going with the double Sturm Pioneer opening, taking out that full squad of conscripts on the retreat. Very nice. However, he's now approaching two more squads in red cover, running through a Molotov. Not sure he's watching this, and he's taking heavy damage on those very expensive Sturm Pio squads. That was a very costly little maneuver right there. That's going to uh, be very expensive to reinforce, and it was for almost no benefit. Uh, inflicting zero casualties on those conscripts, so that was a bit of a tactical misstep right there. And it looks like we do have a Doctrine choice from Gari. He has gone with Luftwaffe and is bringing in an MG-34. We also have a mechanized regiment headquarters up. 
so I would not be surprised to see a Puma in the very near future. He also has fuel transfer activated already, so he's probably uh, going to be rushing his uh, Tier 4, possibly getting out a quick looks. It's also a rather popular move. If we take a look at any player 01, um, we do have the cutoff getting harassed. Nice Molotov right there. Hulk's Grenadiers take heavy damage. However, the MG-34 is quickly up to support and does manage to push the conscripts away before the cutoff can be fully taken. Oh, Shumine gets detonated on the retreat, but fortunately the squad does have one member remaining and they will get away. Nice flank being pulled off by Tech over here, circling around the building, going to uh, put that MG-34 in quite a bit of trouble. We do have another MG-34 up here on the flank. Conscript is going to Ura right past it. Oh, but they just barely don't make it past. The MG-34 sets up just in time to suppress those guys, and they're pinned, and the remaining two squad members will definitely get taken out just by the support rifle guys. Conscript's over here also taking heavy damage from a grenade. Folks Grenadier and Stern Pioneer fire Maxim. Uh, it's about to get flanked by this MG-34, it looks like, so the, uh, Gari should be able to win his side back in the near future, but Pinoy Balut is struggling a little bit over here on the, uh, right side. Any player successfully retaking all of the resources and flanking what forces he does have remaining, forcing what looks like a full retreat from the right side. But that shouldn't be too big of a deal as long as the Axis can hold on to their side of the map and also at least one victory point. They should be able to cruise into the mid game relatively well. It's just a matter of keeping these Soviet forces pushed back. We do have a mortar getting produced by Tech, although it's about to get spotted by this flamethrower squad over here, which could be a problem. Stern Pioneers are freshly reinforced and managed to catch a Maxim, forcing that to retreat pretty much immediately. I'm not sure what this mortar is doing. Alright, there it goes. Maybe he just didn't notice. We actually have a demo charge going down right here, although looks like some damage was inflicted while he was planting it. Nice defensive position set up right here. We do have a grenade going out, though. Heavy damage on those Storm Pioneers. They'll be forced away. And he's actually going to be kiting into this MG-34, which is set up dangerously close to a demo charge right here. I think that three of the four of these squad members would die if you were to detonate that, but the gunner himself would be all right. We do have a Shvera Panzer headquarters going up over here, and that's going to help push back a lot of these troops. We also have a pretty big push going in over on the right side. Nothing quite getting close enough to that demo charge to uh, tempt him into detonating it. Oh, he did detonate this, and I was wrong. It actually cleared the gun out entirely. So very nice demo charge placement there. But unfortunately, the Schwerer Panzer headquarters in 2nd MG-34 will be more than enough to prevent these imagery from pushing up. However, we do have a nice Ura going in for the MG-34, and it looks like he will be able to recover that. So that is a nice move there. Successfully drawing uh, the flat gun fire with his other infantry. Meanwhile, over here, shock troops punching through dealing quite a bit of damage, and it looks like both players have chosen a doctrine that allows for shock troops. Any player 01 has gone with, uh, what is this one called? It's called Soviet Shock Army, which has the Sturmovik, the Howitzer, PPSHs and shock troops and the, the heavy mortar. And we also have Shock Motor, which is of course the famous ISU-152 and shock troops doctrine. So... No surprises there, really, from the Soviet side of things. Although I guess Soviet Shock Army is a somewhat unusual choice, since it has no heavy fallen tanks, but maybe he will be able to make good use of the howitzer. Mine's going off. 
Demo charge still hasn't been detonated, despite, I think, a few missed opportunities over here, but I'm sure it's just a matter of time before something juicy enough, like possibly two squads of Sturm Pilots, walks right over top of that. Maxim setting up, preventing pushes. Those two Sturm Pilots squads are going to dodge just barely, it looks like, fortunately. And it looks like... Oh, looks like it was actually visible for a minute there. But fortunate. Oh, there's a Minesweeper on this squad, that would explain it. But unfortunately, only two uh, Grenadiers were killed with the detonation. I think uh, he was just a little too greedy there. Detonated it prematurely, fortunately. And indeed, we do have the quick looks on the field. That will be his first fuel purchase, so he teched to it as fast as he possibly could, going with fuel transfer right into a Schwerer Panzer headquarters, right into a looks. Wow, look at all this Soviet stuff, though. That's going to be a lot for him to contend with. We do have an AT grenade going out, damaging his engine. He doesn't want to get uh, taken out with nothing but AT grenades, so he is going to back off a little bit, especially without any infantry support, now that all the Axis infantry has been pushed back. Unfortunately, there were no MGs set up to suppress the advancing hordes. The looks is going to be sufficient to at least deter some of these pushes. Maxim getting uh, recovered. We do have conscripts sort of uh, pushing up a little bit on the looks, forcing it back. Although they will be content to simply take some territory. Rather than go in for the AT grenade. But that does mean that the repairs will go up quite quickly and it'll be back in action in no time. It's already uh, well on its way to vet one. It takes quite a while to vet up the looks, but it does happen. Over time, if you can uh, make good use of it, shock troops catch these grenadiers off guard. It looks like he wasn't watching that, and that's a full squad down. Getting those shock troops a nice bundle of veterancy, but the looks definitely saw that happening, and he's trying to retaliate. The squad has taken heavy damage. One man remaining, and the FET-2 squad goes down, and unfortunately the field gun was just not quite uh, set up in time, and the looks should be able to get away clean. Still no veterancy on the looks, though, despite taking out a full shock troop squad, so... Yeah, that's pretty much proof that it can take quite a bit of time to start vetting that thing up. I, it's rare to see one get past vet 2, usually by the time that's happening, some sort of medium armor hits the field and takes it out. But if you can keep it alive and get it vetted up, it's a real infantry killing mach machine. Nice push by these folks grenadiers here, kind of catching these weapons off guard. Unfortunately, this MG42 uh, grenadier squad got taken out by some flanking conscripts, so that hurts. And Molotov also goes out on these wounded folks grenadiers, although I think that they will be able to get away just in time. Nice uh, screening by the looks right there. That's going to prevent any catastrophic damage by those conscripts. May even allow him to recover that field gun. The Maxim looks like it's going to get away. We also do have some Sturm Pioneers moving up to assist. More conscripts hitting the field, though, and this road is quickly becoming like a mass graveyard. There's so much fighting going on right here. It's insane. Meanwhile, the left side pretty much totally unopposed. Uh, the ally is content to just let the Axis have it, when really all they have to do is send one spare squad of conscripts to start retaking some territory over here. The Schwerer Panzer headquarters uh, not covering anything beyond the uh, victory point, so they really sh would benefit from doing that, I think. So much fighting going on on this road, though, which is actually quite unusual on this map. Usually the fighting is focused more in this area, more in this area, and of course, this area, so obviously on the three victory points. But the allies are pushing very hard for this point for some reason. I'm not sure what the rationale is there because there's almost no resources associated with this point. It's not. It's only a cutoff if the Axis hold these, which they obviously don't at this time. So they're fighting quite hard over ground that doesn't, uh, doesn't matter that much. Looks like we do have Stug E, Assault Gun, hitting the field, so that's going to be a Mechanized Assault Doctrine. Uh, usually, uh, typically chosen against Americans, but certainly not a problem for Soviets either. It's a very effective doctrine. And up against this many shock troops, I can definitely understand that purchase. More grenades being exchanged. Fortunately, the Schwerer Panzer headquarters is in range to support some of these engagements, and it does push back a lot of Soviet infantry. Stug firing. It looks like on the... No. Never mind. I'm trying to get in position, but not making anything happen. And finally, the Axis do break through on the right a little bit. They find a few uh, spare squads that they can send to start capturing some stuff. Also recovering some Deku weapons, which are laying all over the field. 
trying to get those recovered. And it looks is up to 21 kills and has made it to Vet 2, which is going to, uh, it's really going to start being a powerful light tank at this point. Looks like he's going to make a pretty aggressive push here, going straight for the field gun. And I think that that was kind of a bad move. I mean, obviously it's working in this particular case, but he had no way of knowing that there wasn't going to be some sort of supporting screen of troops, and here it comes, actually. It looks like he's going to get his engine damaged deep behind enemy lines, or possibly not. No AT grenade going out, so never mind. And it looks like he's going to get out of that unpunished. So that was a bit of a mistake by the Soviets, I think, not uh, trying to punish that looks for diving so deep. No AT grenades. Nice placement of this MG42 uh, is actually going to suppress a lot of conscripts over here. Lux is doing what it can at range against uh, some various infantry over here on the right. We also have the Stuggy moving up, trying to get some hits off. And this field gun, unfortunately, is having a lot of trouble positioning itself just right to hit any of these, uh, these vehicles. Looks like finally it should get a shot off. I think the Vet 2 gives it a, slightly, a slight HP boost. I could be wrong about that, I'm not sure. Yeah, that's two shots though, and it still has a little bit of health left, so... I'm not sure if that's the veterancy or what, or maybe it's just always like that, I don't know, but the looks should be able to make it away just fine. Stug E moving up in its place, trying to take shots. So far it's only got two kills, so it hasn't performed all that well. He hasn't really been able to get right up in their face. There are lots of uh, terrain variations and cover and shot blockers and things, so the uh, Stug E can struggle a little bit, especially in this really cramped area. But at the same time, it will allow him to escape. It will allow him to avoid a anti-tank gunfire. So, quite, uh, quite tough for everybody involved, especially the conscripts. And man, there have been a lot of casualties in this area. Meanwhile, over on the left, it looks like the Soviets have finally dedicated at least a small amount of forces to retaking some territory over here. Maxim moving up to prevent uh, counterattacks. Looks like he's going to catch that MG34 in a pretty bad position. But unfortunately, without a field gun or a tank or anything, they won't be able to uh, destroy the Schwer Panzer headquarters. At least not anytime soon. MG34, however, is getting taken out by uh, grenades and Maxim fire. We actually do have uh, Sturm Pioneers moving up for a flank, as well as the looks, and there's nothing over here that can possibly stop that, so that's definitely going to beat that. The T-34 is hitting the field, and the, unfortunately, it's being sent over here right into what looks like some kind of engine damage. He must have got fausted, as well as a pack. And it definitely would have been better to have that available to support against this looks. But unfortunately, he sent it over to the right side first. And the T-34 will be a good counter to the Stuggy and the looks, but unfortunately right now it's not really being used to counter either of those things. Oh, but the looks actually goes down to a field gun over here. Wow, I don't know how that happened. It just had full health. He must have, uh, he must have just been ignoring it to let it get three consecutive shots off. Either that or hit a mine or something. I'm not sure. Big Soviet push going for the right side, and now it's kind of looking like things are going pretty well for the Axis, despite losing that looks territory-wise. Uh, they're doing quite well victory point-wise. It looks like this could turn into a pretty long slug fest, the rate at which things are going, and of course, that means we're going to see some Tigers and heavy Axis armor. T-34 going in on the uh, Stuggy a little bit, but decides to instead move to flank the pack, and unfortunately, that rather nice flank by those PPSH conscripts is almost certainly going to clear these team weapons out. MG-42 narrowly making an escape the pack certainly has no chance, and it looks like the Soviets are going to be able to recover that, so that's very problematic. A stolen pack is a very dangerous thing. A lot of damage going in on those conscripts, though. Vet 2 squad just got cleared because he wasn't paying attention, that's a shame. 
A bombing run just got called in on some stern pioneers. Two of them killed, the rest make it away. Okay, we also have another T-34 hitting the field. Still no high-tech units from, uh... Tech. Relying purely on shock troops for now. And, uh, of course, some recovered weapons. And it looks like he's saving up all of his fuel. You know, we do have 380 fuel saved for an IS-2, I believe, or an ISU. He is saving up his manpower now, so he'll be calling that in in the very near future, so that's going to be a problem for the Axis. Meanwhile, Pinoy will also not spending much of his fuel. He did bring in one Stug E, which he kind of needs to repair. Uh, but other than that, it looks like he's going to be saving up for a Tiger. He does have the command points for it, but he still needs to bring in a little uh, more manpower. So it looks like the ISU and the Tiger are going to be hitting the field at uh, just about the exact same time. Neither one of them is going to quite have the advantage over the other. As far as hitting... Wow, they literally got called in at the exact same time. ISU right there, Tiger right there. So they will be hitting the battlefield at at pretty much the exact same time. And we'll see which one gets better used. ISU is, of course, de deadly on this map, especially when it's difficult for anything to make a rapid push. There's so much suppression and everything. Meanwhile, we do have any players T-34s roaming, looking for targets. Trying to screen enemy infantry and things like that. We do have an MG34 over here. Some folks grenadiers throwing a grenade at this uh, Maxim, I believe, in the house. T-34 moves to retaliate. Conscripts taking heavy fire, but they're hopefully going to make it into that house before getting pinned. Yep, they did make it just barely in time. T-34. Uh, not really doing much. We do also have the Stuggy being relocated to the western uh, part of the map. And he's going to try to keep these in these pushes back with that. We also have the Tiger moving up over here on the right. ISU over here on the right as well, taking shots. The MG34 with assistance from the, uh, the players, which I believe... Actually, I'm not sure who's dropping those. Something. Something inspiring those flares. Oh, we actually have a King Tiger hitting the field from Gari. I didn't even notice that. That's going to be very dangerous for uh, these things to contend with. We have a T-34 Ram going in, which accomplishes almost nothing. It gives a crew shock, not even, uh, not even uh, engine damage or anything. Oh, there's some engine damage, though, from an anti-tank grenade. Very nice. Stuggy is also going to have to get out of the way, or there's going to be a bit of a traffic jam situation over here. T-34 flank coming in on the right side. We do have a Panzer Shrek screen, though, fortunately. Oh. And that's, uh... I think that was some sort of target weak point or something. You know, I have a lit right there. Yeah. Stuns the T-34, so very nice move, although uh, this is some questionable King Tiger positioning right here. He's kind of exposing his rear armor a little bit. He's trying to get out of the line of fire of that ISU, doing everything he can. Oh no, and the Tiger on the flank actually gets taken out by sustained AT gunfire right here. I think it also had damaged engines, so it took a lot of rear armor hits. And that hurts a lot, but fortunately the King Tiger is still alive. As is the ISU-152. And I believe two T-34s also got taken out in that engagement, so things are pretty even uh, as far as that's concerned. Although if this ISU gets too aggressive, he risks losing it. But Kettenwerfer is about to fire. If it can get some shots off. Oh, shot bounces. Might get one more. But it also bounces, so unfortunately the ISU will be fine. High explosive barrage going out on the right side, but there is quite a bit of harassment going in from the Axis now. And the, uh, the the Axis late game is really starting to really starting to come out. Although things are definitely not over for the Soviets just yet. Pushing in with uh, some elite infantry over here. Nice flank about to go out on that MG42 forces a quick retreat. And the Grenadiers are soon to follow. Could lose the full squad if he chases. Ah, uh, he was a little late to chase right there. He should have started the, should have started chasing earlier. I think he could have gotten that. 
he definitely could have gotten that. But the Soviets do push back this push on the right side. Fresh G34 hitting the field. ISU still needs repairs quite badly. Our opponents are seizing a sector. And I believe that was an airborne assault right there, but it didn't uh, go particularly well. Apparently, Soldier Maker got taken out quite quickly. King Tiger, on the other hand, is getting repaired quite quickly. Very nice uh, teamwork here from Pinoy Bullet as well as Gari, uh, working together to get that repaired as quickly as possible. Meanwhile, the repairs on the ISU have not been particularly quick, although I think this is conscript repair uh, that we see here, so fortunately he will be able to make use of that and get repaired in the near future, but not before the King Tiger is able to hit the field, so it looks like we will see a little bit more field dominance from Gari here than from uh, Tech due to the uh, the quick repairs. And that T-34 stood no chance. Probably should have pulled back much farther, but I guess he wasn't quite expecting the King Tiger to hit the field uh, so soon. He was probably using his own ISU as a gauge for when those repairs would be done, but he hit the field very quickly. And generally, when you deal that much damage to a heavy, you don't expect to see it again for quite a while, but that, those repairs were very fast. So that, that hit the field a little bit quicker than I think they were ready for. MG34 getting flanked. Nice, uh, nice flank by those conscripts. I think that was somewhat poor positioning by that MG, but it looks like he was using it not only to screen, but also to cap. And sometimes you have to do that when your infantry starts getting tight. So he's lost quite a few squads, but it looks like Pinoy Balut actually has three Grenadier squads, so it might be better to use those Grenadiers to cap and use the uh, machine guns to screen. Of course, it can be very challenging to screen shock troops with their uh, armor and uh, smoke grenades. Assault gun taking heavy damage from two uh, well-placed field guns. Three, actually. Very nicely placed. Very ready to counter that King Tiger, and it's going to take heavy damage. It allowed uh, an AT grain grenade to penetrate, and it's taking hev heavy fire. This ISU is also going to be a problem, especially for the repairing squads, the area of effect. Oh, could be very devastating. I think that was one full squad of Pyos down, another one almost killed, and they're still repairing under ISU fire. Looks like it's actually going to switch targets, though. Unfortunately, that shot missed. We also have mortars going in on the AT guns over here. One of them about to get cleared. Grenadiers could rifle grenade. Uh, mortar does clear that AT gun right there. A well-placed rifle grenade might help. We actually have a Faust going in on the ISU, damaging that one's engine, but we actually have a second one hitting the field already. And I don't know if the Axis have any other heavy tanks on the way to help. take a look at Pinoy below we do see he has 300 fuel and 600 manpower so he's definitely saving for a tire We're going to be bringing that in, in about 20 manpower and hopefully he'll make better use of the second one than he did the first one they really do need to be careful of these massed field guns though so he's making really good use of those and that ISU is just firing away on the King Tiger fortunately or no unfortunately the engine has not been repaired they got very close to finishing it off but uh, ISU is putting a little bit too much pressure on. It might have even been worth sticking around despite being under ISU fire just to get that engine repaired because now this push is getting pretty aggressive and I'm not 100% confident that this is going to get away. If these AT guns continue to chase and the ISU continues to fire. Uh, vision being provided by these shock troops, although they're going to be forced back by the Tiger. We do have some repairs moving up. Field guns continuing to push. Shots bouncing and missing though. Tiger getting, whoa, what, what is that Tiger doing? I'm not sure this is gonna, oh, we actually have some sort of artillery support coming in though. That's going to be uh, a light artillery strike from mechanized assault. That might clear both of those field guns, providing quite an advantage against uh, in this engagement, but it's still not enough, and that's still a way too aggressive Tiger. There was, there were three field guns, and they knew that before. Only one of them gets cleared, and 
and uh, they they also knew that there was a second ISU, so that was definitely an ill-advised push. I'm not sure what he was thinking there, especially without his teammates' support, without support from this pack. That was a huge mistake. He was trying to use that tiger as if it were a puma. And I'm actually somewhat surprised not to see a Puma, because a Puma is quite nice against an ISU. If you can uh, circle around the flanks, get some shots off. For example, driving it right up the right side of this map, and then circling around behind right there. You could definitely uh, have a decent chance of killing it. And even if you don't manage to kill it, you certainly keep it busy. Possibly it will rotate if they're not paying attention and expose its flanks to a uh, heavier armor push up the middle. We do have a pack getting set up here with machine gun support. Shock troops quickly getting suppressed, but the pack is somewhat poorly angled. It looks like the uh, T-34 is going to go for the flank. Panzerfaust is going out, however, on the T-34, so that's going to be engine damage, but the pack is already cleared. And the ISU is also dealing rather heavy damage. The King Tiger is not moving to respond. Looks like it is now, although it's somewhat awkwardly positioned. It is going to need to rotate forward a little here. But the ISU is pulling way back. Still in range to fire, though, dealing heavy damage to these units. But fortunately, the pack doesn't get decrewed by the shot, and the T-34 is wiped out once again. So that is a lot of T-34s being lost by any player. And uh, it really is coming down to these ISUs to keep the King Tiger at bay combination of course with the field guns this one however is dangerously close to getting cleared I think a few may have been completely destroyed but they keep getting produced tech is bringing them out very diligently and that's uh, of course a good thing to see any player also actually bringing this one back to base for healing and reinforcement since he doesn't want to lose the veracity but it's important to remember if you're gonna do that to repair it because it's already the gun itself is at half health and that's like one king tiger shot away from just being totally destroyed wow that king tiger uh, got a little cocky there was pushing in it is vet two but uh there's really no no chance of beating two ISUs and two field guns. And he's going to need to be a little more careful with that. If anything, I'm surprised that he's not pushing on the left over here, which is pretty much completely undefended. And taking out uh, some targets of opportunity over there, like this vetting machine gun. Possibly any uh, spare squads of infantry that he could run into. Of course, he doesn't know for sure what's over there. He also doesn't want to lose this victory point, which they're fighting for quite fiercely. Uh, the Axis do have the victory point lead. We do see them at 339 points still. The Soviets slowly getting whittled away. And this is one of those games where neither team necessarily has a particularly distinct later, late or early game advantage. Um, now that the Soviets do have ISUs on the field, that's probably one of the strongest late game units there is. And of course the Axis have access to the King Tiger and the regular Tiger. So both of those are very powerful units to have at your disposal at this point. And infantry are doing what they can to keep the points captured. But it's really coming down to the heavy armor to clear the way for uh, capping squads and things like that. Unfortunately, a lot of the uh, burden is falling on this lone King Tiger. Uh, Pinoy Bullet has thrown two Tigers away, and that's making things difficult. It's hard for this single heavy armor unit to take on the world all by itself, although Gari does have 285 fuel right now, so I'm surprised we haven't seen a Stuka. I'm surprised we haven't seen a Puma. We haven't seen uh, anything. He could definitely be supplementing this. Uh, with some more forces, but he just hasn't brought in any other vehicles, and I almost wonder if he's thinking of saving up for a second King Tiger, which uh, is certainly not a terrible decision, but I think a Puma a lot earlier would have been more helpful, but we'll see what he's planning. Maybe, yeah, if, by the look of things, I would guess he's just going for another King Tiger. If I had to guess, and probably spending his munitions on uh, airborne assault and rounding out his infantry forces that way bringing in some man, uh, some free, quote-unquote, Fallschirmjäger squads. And it looks like he did send his King Tiger over to the left side to take out some 
uh, lightly defended positions. Field gun getting cleared. Maxim getting pushed away. Another field gun about to get cleared. And uh, it looks like you may salvage that. Very nice move there. Oh, full squad of Sturmpyos just gets taken out by one ISU shot, unfortunately. And now the King Tiger has to do some awkward maneuvering to get out of range there. He does finish salvaging. So that's nice, and it looks like that squad should make it away. King Tiger, uh, King Tiger needs to get out of there, though. And I'm actually surprised the ISUs haven't pushed in on the Schwerer Panzer headquarters earlier. They have been preoccupied taking out armor and heavy defenses over on the right. It looks like they are doing well over there, retaking the victory points. And, uh, oh, jeez, that King Tiger is getting way too aggressive. What is he doing? He needs to blitz out of there. He just messed up for sure. There's some artillery going in on this messed stuff. And fortunately, fortunately that ISU didn't get a shot off. And it looks like he will be able to get clear, but that Schwerer Panzer headquarters stood no chance against, against this push. We do have a Panzer IV getting produced by Pinoy Bullet, actually. Uh, moving back towards some medium armor, possibly as a response to the ISUs, hoping to vet it up and therefore be able to use it to blitz uh, on the flanks. But it is, of course, going to be rather fragile. It's certainly no Tiger. And uh, we'll see if he's able to get make good use of it. I'm surprised he didn't purchase that earlier. I'm not sure how good it's going to be at this point in the game with this much heavy uh, heavy firepower on the field. And these ISUs are really just destroying everything. 55 kills on this one, whereas if we take a look at the King Tiger by comparison, it's only got 41. And they did hit the field at roughly the same time, so it looks like the ISU is performing quite a bit better. And uh, I think it's due quite largely to the fact that these two Tigers just made no impact and were just thrown away. It's good to see him preserving this Panzer IV a little bit uh, more carefully. It's important, but it, I'm hoping it's not too little too late. And uh, it's really on Gari now to carry things. And I was right that he did go for a second King Tiger, and I think that was a mistake. I think some Pumas would really be serving him much better here. He needs the mobility combined with the firepower. A Puma is just a wonderful unit against ISUs. It's a wonderful unit in general. It's probably one of the best units the Overcommando West can field, honestly. But we'll see if he can brute force things a little bit here. I'm surprised he's not popping Blitz. He is Vet 3 as well. If he could pop Blitz, he would easily be able to chase down. Oh, nice flank with the Panzer IV by Pinoy Balut. Perfect positioning and timing. Blocking the pathing of that ISU. This one's now going to be extremely vulnerable. Wouldn't be surprised if the uh, top mount machine gunners could clear out that field gun as well. Unfortunately, this thing's rotating its turret stupidly. He really needs to pop Blitz to finish that thing off, though. Pop Blitz. Yeah, there he goes, there he goes, all right. He's going in, Panzer IV also doing what it can. Nice penetrating shots, too. A bit of luck, a bit of initiative. Should be all that's required to finish it off. There it is, nice shot by that King Tiger. That is a Vet four King Tiger now. T-34 trying to support going in on the flank, but that King Tiger is also on its way up. And unfortunately, a third ISU is on the field, and now this one is dangerously exposed. He's already used Blitz. He can't use it again. Trying to get out of the line of fire. T-34 gets <laughs> abandoned, actually. Light artillery coming in, trying to desperately to clear that field gun before his Vet 4 KT gets destroyed. If it gets one more shot off, that could be disastrous. He's actually turning it the wrong way, though. What is he doing? I think that KT is going to make it out alive. This one, on the other hand, has a damaged engine and is taking heavy damage from an ISU, so I don't think there's any chance of that thing getting away. Bundle grenade going in on the spotters. Uh, they dodge it, though. P4 is actually going to try to flank the ISU or push it away somehow so that it cannot finish off the King Tiger. This one's actually out of control, though. It's already dead, so yeah, it's dead. Must have gotten it with an ISU shot or a something. Something got it. And that P4 is not going to be able to win this, I don't think. Trying to utilize the uh, the better agility. I don't know. There's actually 
There is a field gun. Yeah, there's a field gun right there. All right. New T-34 hitting the field as well. So now there is one heavily wounded ISU with uh, almost vet one. Meanwhile, on the other side of things, we have a vet four Königstiger that uh, just took out two ISUs. So that's huge, huge benefit uh, to the Axis. That that engagement definitely went in the Axis' favor, although the loss of that King Tiger and a couple of Pinoy's medium tanks definitely hurts. But at the same time, I think. I don't I don't know who's gonna win this. This is so close. <laughs> and it's exacerbated by the fact that I don't even know which player uh, <laughs> is the one who sent me this replay. So I actually this is probably the very first replay I've cast where I actually don't have any idea which side is gonna win. Things are so close right now. I, I kinda thought the Soviets were gonna were gonna have it when those two ISUs were dominating and blowing up spare panzer headquarters, but that push has kinda changed my mind a little bit here. This King Tiger is now Vet 4. He's doing some serious damage with it, retaking some territory. Nice to see some late game Sturm Pioneers hitting the field too. It's good to have those for repairs, if nothing else. And um, they're probably the uh, the repair unit that scales best, since they do such nice DPS and they have uh, so much other utility. Minesweepers and stuff. They, uh, they're the, like pretty much one of the best early game DPS units you have, but they can also repair in the late game, so that's why. That's one of the things that makes spamming more than one of those squads uh, useful. So I definitely agree with his decision to get a few extra squads of those. Unfortunately, his infantry uh, forces are extremely lacking. We do have a stolen field gun here to help against any more T-34 pushes, and unfortunately, his T King Tiger was pushed back by a little bit of fi uh, fire from what looks like a stolen pack, actually, up here. The right side victory point getting taken back by some late-game assault grenadiers, of all things. Kind of a weird decision. They're very expensive and pretty ineffective against <laughs> just about anything, except for maybe conscripts. That, uh, that ISU shot was pretty devastating, though. It's a nasty, friendly fire. Oh, wow, engine damage actually going out on that Austin from that ISU shot. He's going to have to move back in, repair a little bit. We actually have some Balsham Jaeger getting popped out of a house, and this late in the game, I think that's a mistake. That's 440 manpower to purchase one of those. And I would really suggest getting a Puma. Like, a Puma against this thing would be really beneficial. They don't have much, like, as long as you can keep it away from the AT guns, they don't have much that can, uh, hurt it over here. It would be really nice to throw that on the flank of that ISU. You can sneak it behind enemy lines while you use the heavy armor to sort of draw fire from the, the heavy AT. And if the Puma draws fire from the AT, as in they, like, rotate around and then it pulls it off your heavy armor, then really, so much the better. Nice damage going in on the, uh, on... T-34 up there. He doesn't want to risk risk it any further. He's actually going to finish it off with a Faust from his Falschermjäger. Nice play. Pulling his King Tiger to safety. He knows that units are going to be on their way to respond. He doesn't want to take any unnecessary risk, so he just deals heavy damage with a few shots from the KT and finishes it off with a Faust. Nice play right there by Gari. Gari's really executing this game. While I don't agree necessarily with all, uh, his build decisions, I think that he is doing really well with what he has chosen, and that's that's really what matters most, uh, is adapting uh, your army to your uh, playstyle. Whereas Pinoy Bullet, on the other hand, uh, seems to <laughs> have a really aggressive playstyle, and it's not he's not executing all that well, although his build decisions I don't necessarily think are all that bad. I think the P4 would, it certainly worked out well. Austin, not a bad choice against this mass temperature either. And uh, Tigers are never a poor decision, so... He's simply letting his tanks die a little too much, and that's that's why he's struggling. Another P4 hitting the field. He's really falling back on medium armor now, not letting his resources float too high, not relying on Tigers. He, he definitely likes the more mobile units, and that's beginning to show. He likes being able to flank and encircle. That's why he's bringing in this medium armor rather than the heavy armor, I think, and uh, that is paying off somewhat against these ISUs. At least it did in that one engagement where the two ISUs were destroyed, but now he's struggling again. 
Most of it just from lack of a particularly large force. If we take a look, he's only got nothing. Some Grens, Bios, one machine gun, one P4. That's hardly an army at all this late in the game. What is he doing with that King Tiger? This is way too aggressive. He really sh shouldn't be taking any risks like this. What is he thinking? If he's going to push, he should push the central victory point and try and cap and get that clock ticking. I'm kind of surprised to see that move there. But, uh, looks like he's not going to be punished particularly severely. Uh, maybe he was chasing a, trying to chase down a full squad or something. I don't know. I'm not sure what motivated that attack. We do have the Soviets pushing pretty hard over here on the right. Stolen MG-34 protecting the VP, T-34 protecting the other VP in the road. King Tiger continuing to fight over here on the left. And victory points are not a huge concern for either side yet. Still uh, quite even at about 140 points each. But it's gonna start uh, to become a much more urgent. Oh, oh wow, full squad down there. It's gonna become a lot more urgent though uh, if either side can take all three victory points for even a minute, a minute and a half. It's going to start becoming a pretty desperate game. High explosive barrage from a stolen Zis. Very nice. Dealing some uh, damage over there. Very nice. Uh, he just hasn't noticed, I don't think, and it's really. Wow, that was a nice barrage. 12 kills on a Zis gun. Good play. Very good play by Gari with that that stolen Zis. Using that as a sort of ad hoc late game, late artillery barrage. King Tiger. It looks like he's just not quite sure what to do with his King Tiger because of all of this massed AT. And I, man, they could really use a Stuka. I just can't believe he hasn't purchased anything other than King Tigers. A Stuka. Oh, he, oh, he is building a Stuka. Good for him. Good for him. Adapt to your situation. Learn, learn from your opponent. Look at what he's doing and find the proper counter. Good purchase right there. I'm glad to see him not just continuing to spam King Tigers. It's a little late. I think he could have got this a while ago. He still has 160 fuel in the bank even after that purchase. But better late than never. It's not too late to win this game. Clear these team weapons out. Finish these Soviets off. It looks like his teammate could definitely use help, though, he if he would send his King Tiger over there and fight off. I mean, this is nothing for a King Tiger. He could easily clear that out, whereas his teammate is really struggling with nothing but two P4s. Like, this is a really even match, two P4s versus that. But if that King Tiger were to move up and help, that would really be good. But he just keeps shoving it into the face of an ISU and three AT guns. It's not necessarily that effective. We actually have a super late game T70 hitting the field of all things. Not sure what motivates that decision. The AT guns are actually relocating a little bit, unfortunately, because of the uh, P4 over here, and as a result, he didn't really hit anything with that stupid barrage. Okay, he shouldn't have fired that blind. And now he's trying to go in. He just, I think he was hoping that that was going to do a lot more than it did, and now this Zis gun is actually blocking the King Tiger's path. What is he doing? Oh my goodness. Oh no. <laughs> He just lost everything. All his Volschermjäger and his King Tiger. That was a horrible, horrible idea. I I can't believe he just did that. I, I don't think that could have possibly gone worse for Gari. Wow, he was executing so well up until that point. And then he just threw all his units away. What he should have definitely done is brought his King Tiger over here and supported his teammate, cleared out these T-34s. And he shouldn't have fired that Stuka blind either. I mean, that would have gone a lot better if all the AT guns had died, but they didn't. Oh, jeez. Well, that's troubling. That was a Vet 5 King Tiger. Right down the drain. Now it's actually up to Pinoy Bullet to win with nothing but two P4s, and I'm not sure if I see that happening. Kind of eerily quiet now. Soviet just moving up and taking territory. There's nothing to stop them anymore. The team is back to full 
looks like Gary is going to stay for another King Tiger. Not surprising, he hasn't got much choice. He really needs heavy armor. He's pretty much the centerpiece of his army for quite a while. Nice, nice little maneuvers here by Pinoy Below with these P4s. He could take out both of these T-34s. Now, yeah, I think he's going to. The, the AT supports just not in range to retaliate. And using the smoke from the destroyed T-34, he may be able to escape. He does have a damaged engine from a nice AT grenade from these conscripts, forcing just about everything to glorious charge all the way up to the front lines. Looks like the smoke is going to clear. Taking shots, I think that it is a dead P4. Oh, he's actually using attack ground. The smoke hasn't quite cleared yet. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's going to get away or not. The AT guns are pushing up. We do have a Stuka Barrage going in, though. Could be devastating if it's aimed over... It's not aimed over there. It's aimed at some combat engineers. And it kills them. So that's good. They really, they really need to get rid of these things. They're, they're a serious problem. Looks like a new Schwerer Panzer headquarters is actually defending this victory point, and I wouldn't recommend building it in such an exposed position. Since he's obviously not planning on actually purchasing any units, units out of it, he's just using it purely as a, as a defensive emplacement and nothing else. And in that regard, it's not really cost effective as it costs 80 fuel. 80 fuel for a, for a flak emplacement is a little high. King Tiger is getting produced though, and hopefully that one will be used a little bit more intelligently. Orders complete. Not that not that his other one wasn't used intelligently for the vast majority of its lifetime, but its its death was rather upsetting. We do have yet another ISU on the field as well. And so the Soviets are definitely starting to have the numbers advantage here out producing their opponents. Fortunately, these Panzer IVs are still alive. Oh, please do not go in. I think he's trying to go in for some sort of super game-ending flank here, and if he does, that could be disastrous. There's so much stuff over here. Oh, God, I don't even know if he's going to get clear in time. Bit of a traffic jam. Trying to blitz out. Damage going in. That pack. Yeah, stolen pack is a real problem. Like I said before, it's already Vet 3. It's dealing massive damage to the enemy tanks. Stern Pioneer is actually pushing up, of all things, dealing heavy damage to these PPSH conscripts, but taking heavy damage in return from a T-70, no less. And the Stern Pioneers will be pushed away. But it looks like the Axis are clinging to this victory point with every fiber of their being. And that's Duca just hasn't had that, hasn't had the effect that it needs to have just yet. He keeps firing it at like random stuff. Like what? What the hell was that? There's three AT guns over here and two ISUs. I don't even know what that was. Oh well. Oh, nice shot from the new King Tiger. Makes a pretty decent entrance. Trying to clear some stuff out with rifle grenades as well. King Tiger's about to take out two full squads from the looks of things. Now those conscripts, I guess, are going to get away. Moving up over here on the middle. Good decision. If he were to make a full-on headfirst charge into this, that's five heavy anti-tank weapons right there. He wouldn't really stand much of a chance. So good to see him pushing for the middle. Shot penetrates on the frontal armor. ISU quickly repositions as well as a pack already down to less than half health and a damaged engine, unfortunately, due to the, the fact that that AT grenade penetrated the frontal armor. And a T-70 is actually circling around behind, probably to try to interfere with repairs and uh, pathing. But unfortunately, there is a P-4 up to support, and it gets taken out quite quickly. Nice move by Pinoy. Nice support preventing that T-70 from being more of a nuisance than they want it to be. However, the AT weapons are continuing to push and reposition, as well as an ISU. Just insane damage going out. What is that P-4 doing? It just committed suicide, diving into the front line like that. There is a Raketenwerfer screening, but it's just about dead. Grenade 
clears that out pretty much no problem. And that costs a lot of manpower to crew with those Stern Pioneers. I don't know if that was worth it. We actually have yet another Tiger being produced. But it looks like he's just going to dive with it. Fortunately, the AT weapons are actually not really available to support over here, and he will have uh, cover from this bush, so he should possibly be able to clear out that AT gun, if nothing else. Unfortunately, his shots keep missing. So that sucks. They really can't afford any bad luck right now. Doing what he can. Taking a shot on the ISU, actually. Continuing to maneuver and dance around. AT grenade does penetrate, though, on the frontal armor. Just Man, they just can't catch a break here. They need one. They really do. There's, there's not going to be any escape for that tiger now. Stuka actually hits an AT gun. Doesn't kill it though, unfortunately. King Tiger getting some repairs. Points are now looking pretty grim. Maxis only have 50, 51 remaining. And they're now going to lose the right side victory point, and a concerted push for the left side victory point could probably end the game. King Tiger trying to take out some of these AT guns, but these frontal assaults on AT guns with these tanks are just not working. <laughs> oh, jeez. He's actually grabbing some late game Raket Morphers. It's an interesting decision. Not sure it's going to work all that well, but alright. Panzer Schwer headquarters is about to get taken down by a field gun. It's completely undefended. Storm Pioneer is getting pushed away as well. Stuka does have 11 kills, but it just needs to target those barrages so much, night, so much better. And Pinoy needs to stop losing units. Every time he makes one of those deep, like, behind enemy line charges, it's just AT grenade damages the engine, and then it gets blown up by 15 AT guns and ISUs. Kent and Worf are setting up over here. They're a little bit tightly clumped, kind of leaving themselves vulnerable to just any form of AoE, even just some good ISU shots are probably going to be the end of those. We do have the Schwer Panzer headquarters getting destroyed. King Tiger moving up to retaliate, though. Probably going to maybe be able to take out this T-34. Uh, looks like there are no AT weapons available to support, and Sturm Pioneers are going to do what they can to prevent uh, the AT grenade, but it goes off. He should be able to get that engine damage repaired very soon, but the, uh, the capping of the victory point is a pretty serious concern. If he doesn't send a squad over there to deal with it, like, right now, they're pretty much gonna lose but he's not doing that and he's busy fighting this AT gun and other stuff and he's actually losing the squads both squads down that is that's the game now wraps things up they won't be able to capture any victory points in time so wow uh, quite a game there I thought that the Axis had it for sure once those two um, once those two ISUs were taken out, the Soviets had just, just about nothing left. But then, just an insane charge into three AT guns and an ISU. Which, I mean, I just don't know what he was thinking. That was, that was a huge mistake. Well, I don't think I have any real analysis to give here. You pretty much have already heard my thoughts. I hope you enjoyed the game. This video is already running way too long. And uh, if you did, feel free to send me a replay of your own. I'm happy to give it a cast for you, although I'd prefer the games be a little shorter because my computer can barely handle videos of this size as it is. But I hope you liked the video, and thanks for watching.